allies to understand how much happened to North America. It is important to the U.S., it is important to Canada. And there is a clear, um, there is a clear uh, unity of different theaters when it comes to um, uh, what is happening in Ukraine and European security and also what is happening in the Indo-Pacific. We're seeing cooperation uh, between China and Russia and, and China being uh, an enabler uh, of Russia's war in Ukraine. We're seeing now uh, uh, DPRK troops uh, joining Russian troops uh, uh, in the context of the war in Ukraine. And so it is important for our friends here in Europe uh, to understand that. And I think that we can make sure that we work together on that. Why is that important? It's also important because we have a security ar architecture for the uh, for Euro-Atlantic security, which is NATO. We don't have any uh, clear uh, security architecture for the Indo-Pacific. There are different minilaterals, including uh, the Quad, that is not a security architecture, but, you know, a diplomatic um, minilateral. There, are, there is AUKUS, but we're pushing even more to uh, be working with South Korea, with Japan, with the U.S., particularly in the North Pacific, because we're an Indo-Pacific country, and it is important also that we understand uh, the uh, true competition that China has been involved in and the security threats that are linked to that uh, region of the world. Um, when it comes to um, President-elect Trump, I think he's uh, arriving for his second mandate at a time where NATO has uh, fundamentally changed and has been reinforced. And uh, countries are investing uh, way more in defense than under his first mandate. And so in that sense, I think that we have a strong leader with the Secretary General, Mark Rutte, who has worked with President Trump in the past. We have also many countries that are investing uh, a lot more. And I think that uh, he is arriving at a time where we are very united in supporting Ukraine. And so looking forward to having conversations with the future Secretary uh, of State, Marco Rubio, on this very issue. But I think also that uh, it is up to us uh, to make sure as strong allies and as supporters of Ukraine to talk about how much what is happening in Ukraine is fundamental, not only to European security, but to North Atlantic security into the world security. I will answer questions okay. regarding Georgia. I actually answered questions yesterday because I was doing a um, Baltic uh, 3 plus 1 uh, meeting in, uh, in Riga and I said indeed that Canada would be imposing uh, sanctions on key officials and also entities uh, in Georgia and we will do so working of course with our European and American friends. What uh, escalated conflict in Syria? Could you tell us your position in Syria, please. Mm -hmm. Well, we're following this very closely. I've been uh, in active conversations with many of uh, my colleagues on this, and I will be meeting the Turkish foreign minister later today. So looking forward to having uh, more insight on this issue. Uh, of course, what uh, we're seeing in, in the Middle East is uh, there is uh, a, a ceasefire in Lebanon, uh, and that needs to hold. We are, have been calling for the release of hostages in Gaza. We've been calling for a ceasefire fire as well and we want to make sure that ultimately Iran is held accountable because Iran is spreading uh, terror across the Middle East and it cannot use its proxies to continue to do that including in uh, Iraq and including in Syria. To update its uh, plans to tackle hybrid attacks we're seeing more and more of them now. Well, uh, this is definitely an issue and of course we've had many conversations about this at the table. Um, Canada will be uh, next year uh, chairing the G7 and we will be definitely working on um, a maritime security approach which uh, will be about uh, addressing sanction circumvention, addressing also shadow fleets issues, addressing undersea infrastructure and making sure that we can address also illegal fishing which is all linked to some of the hybrid uh, war tactics that you're referring to. You will very much focus uh, tonight on uh, Ukraine. Uh, we know that the situation on the battlefield is difficult and we have to do everything we can to get more military aid into Ukraine. And I want to thank you, uh, the US, but also Sweden and the UK and uh, Estonia and uh, Norway and Germany for making an announcement the last couple of days again of extra military aid going into Ukraine. This is quite crucial, particularly now that the winter is coming and we know the situation with the uh, energy 
infrastructure in Ukraine. Tomorrow we will discuss amongst the 32 the issue of the increasing Russian aggression against NATO allies and how to counter that. Uh, and this is a very important subject we will spend a lot of time on tomorrow morning. And also here, uh, your leadership uh, is highly valued. So again, thank you for being here, but particularly thank you for being here for the last four years. We wish you the best after January, but we need you till the 20th of January every day, and we know we can count on you. Again, thank you. Mark, thank you very much. And uh, like it or not, you've got me and you've got us till the 20th of January, every minute, every day. Uh, we're determined to keep moving forward on the work we've been doing together over the last four years, work that has strengthened this alliance in extraordinary ways with new members, new resources and assets, and I think a new determination uh, both to continue to stand with Ukraine faced with the Russian aggression, uh, but also to deal with uh, a myriad of other threats and challenges that brings us together in the world's greatest defensive alliance. Um, we share the concern that uh, Mark expressed for Ukraine in this ongoing aggression, but that only reinforces our determination to make sure that Ukraine has what it needs to deal with what it's facing on the battlefield, also to deal with the ongoing onslaught on its energy infrastructure with, once again, Putin weaponizing winter, trying to freeze people uh, out of their homes, uh, turn out the lights. Uh, we're not going to let that happen. We're determined on that front as well. Uh, but we have a broad range of other challenges that we have to look at. We'll be doing that over the next couple of days. Uh, this is a vital moment, I think, for uh, the Alliance to make sure that we're level set for the year ahead. And I'll just say in conclusion this, and I've said it before, I think what people need to re remain focused on is this. The reason so many countries are invested in this Alliance, the reason that new countries, Finland and Sweden, have joined the Alliance, the reason the alliance is stronger than ever is because we all know it's the best guarantee against war, the best means to prevent conflict, the best means to ensure our collective security. And that's because in joining NATO, every ally takes a pledge that an attack on one is an attack on all. And that means that any would-be aggressor knows that if they take on one NATO country, they have to take on all of them. And that is the best way to deter aggression in the first place. And that's why I think you see a stronger alliance, a bigger alliance, a determined alliance, and we'll continue to reaffirm that today and tomorrow. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, sir.